Hi Grade 3 and Grade 4, welcome to DC. Now today you're going to be writing a question and then researching the answer to your question. And I believe that in PE you've been uh, designing and planning your own special mini Olympics. And I thought it would be nice for us to do a little bit more research about the Olympics. Now the Olympics are on every four years and 2020 was meant to be an Olympics year but with all of COVID-19 going on, they had to cancel the Olympics and they're hoping to have it next year. So it is nice that you do get to celebrate it a little bit during your specialist subjects this term. So grade three and four, I want you to start thinking about a good question that you can find out about the Olympics. Something that you would like to know. Now, what's a good question? A good question to start with is open Ended. And that's what I want you to focus on today. An open-ended question makes sure that uh, you have more than just a one-word answer. If you only need one word to answer your question, then we call that closed. So a closed question might be something like, do you have a dog? And it's either yes or it's no. If I wanted to ask an open-ended question about your dog, I might ask, how do you take care of your dog? How do you look after it? I can get a lot more information out of an open-ended question. I'll give you an example of one for the Olympics. Now I could ask, uh, where and when was the first Olympic Games held? And that's a bit of a closed question because the only answer I can give is the year and the location, the place that it was. However, I could make my question a lot more interesting by asking uh, how have the Olympics changed from the first Olympics to the modern day Olympics to now? Because in my answer, I'd still be able to tell you when and where the first Olympics was, but I'd give you more information and I'd tell you all the interesting things about how the Olympics has changed. So I'm going to go to my screen now. So grade three and four, I'm on Google now because I want to show you how I researched my question, how I found the answer. I've refined my question. I've thought about it. And I'm going to ask the question, what is the difference between the ancient and modern Olympics. There we go, it's popped up for me already. Now I know already that there was this thing called the ancient Olympics and that they used to compete in games and, um, and that the modern Olympics, the Olympics that we see now is uh, based off the ancient ones. But I think they would have changed a lot. So let's have a look and see what we find. Often you'll get this little box at the top of your search um, and it gives you some quick information, but I wanna find a little bit more than that. So I'm going to scroll down. Here we go. Top six differences between the ancient and the modern Olympics. Let's see. So we've got here, number one, the ancient Olympic Games only allowed people of Greek descent, so Greek people, to participate. This website's a little bit old because it's talking about the Salt Lake City Olympics, which was a few years ago now. But you can still see that they had 2,600 athletes from 77 different countries. So the ancient Olympic Games, only the Greek people were allowed to participate. Now it's a worldwide event. Always consider your website as well, grade three and four. You may find that your website is a little bit out of date. You need to think about also who wrote your website and whether that information is accurate. Sometimes it's good to go to a different website and see if the information is consistent or the same or similar between the two. So number two is only men were allowed to compete in the ancient Greek games. And if I read on, I find out that the first women 
weren't allowed to compete until uh, the 1900 Olympics and they played croquet. So I could write that into my own words and talk about that. Um, yeah, so if we keep scrolling down, the ancient Olympics yielded only one winner. So there's lots of winners in the modern day Olympics, lots of gold medals handed out. A crown of olive leaves was placed on his head and a statue of his image was erected in Olympia. So that is very, very different to now. We get gold, silver and bronze medals. And if we go down to number five, we find out the Winter Olympics are a modern invention. So in ancient Greece, there wasn't snow and there wasn't a Winter Games. So that's a new one for us and an obvious difference between the ancient and the modern Olympics. So just in a couple of minutes, I've already found a lot of information to answer my question. So grade three and four, now I want you to have a go at writing your own inquiry question about the Olympic Games. Make sure that it's open-ended. Can you get a lot of really good information out of your question? Very important. Have a go at researching and finding the answer and putting that into your own words. I'm looking for people who don't just copy the paragraph or the writing straight from the internet and put it into Seesaw. I want you to have a go at putting it into your own words because then I know you've understood what you read. Okay, have a go at that grade three and four. It's up on Seesaw as well for you. And I will see you all again next week. Bye.